During the second millennium BC, the Epic of Gilgamesh was being written in ancient Samaria, or the site of modern-day Iraq. In the West, we consider it to be one of the oldest works of ancient literature. But in the East, the Chinese were also developing a language. The I Ching, also called the Book of Changes, is another one of our oldest texts. The Chinese had developed their language over 3,000 years ago, and it's been discovered as drawings on oracle bones or tortoise shells. By drawing pictographs and inserting a heated pin, cracks would form as a method of divination. But the I Ching is more than a divination book. Sharing many of the same concepts found in the Tao Te Ching, the I Ching can also be read as a philosophical text. It evolved into a classic of ancient Chinese philosophy, and its ideas were celebrated by Confucians, Buddhists, and Taoists alike. To the novice, the I Ching speaks in an ancient and cryptic language that appears to have little relevance to modern times. The meaning becomes clearer when you consider how nature was at the root of Chinese philosophy. The early Taoists observed nature to understand the human condition. The eight basic trigrams, or Bagua, are formed of three lines, and each captures a principle of change observed in nature. By combining them into 64 possible groupings, the six-line hexagrams emerge. Each portrays the various states of challenges and changes one may face. In the introduction, we are told, changes is a book from which one may not hold aloof. Its Tao is forever changing, alteration movement without rest. This describes how Tao embodies change as it manifests in two states, yin and yang. In the same way force and field interact through electromagnetism, or how high and low pressure systems attract to become wind, yin and yang attract and influence each other. One transforms into the opposite. As yin and yang transform, life shows us how it is in a continuous state of change. This malleability forms the basis of the Yijing. Yin is the moist valley, the field that propagates the force. It is open and flowing and is associated with the feminine, earth, darkness, dreams, and the act of yielding. And yet we are told the most submissive can ride roughshod over the hardest thing. We see this in courtship where the feminine can overwhelm the masculine with a seductive power. In the I Ching, yin is portrayed by a broken or open line. Yang is the apex of summer and associated with the way of heaven as it manifests on the earth. This life-giving force is like the sun setting off a chain reaction of abundance as plants bloom and initiate the carbon cycle. In the Yi Jing, Yang is portrayed by a solid line. By throwing coins or yarrow stalks, one receives either an open yin line or solid yang line. The hexagrams are then built from the bottom up, and each hexagram consists of six lines. The lines can also be called new or old, and any old line will transform into the opposite. This is how one hexagram is said to be changing into another. In this case, we would read the two hexagrams side by side. In this example, the top three lines were old yang and so transformed into an open or yin line. The first hexagram is 25 innocence and now must be understood alongside of 24 return. On first appearance, there's already a sense of going backwards. Even those top lines can look like our hard-headedness required some type of wake-up call. Hexagram 24 return says, thunder within the earth, the image of a turning point. The sky opens and we are forced to go to back to the beginning. Return is always a path to authenticity. Innocence teaches us about being supple and unattached, like a baby who has not yet learned to smile. In other words, not overly reactive, but observant. Line four offers a message about dusting ourselves off after trying. Line five actually suggests possible psychosomatic responses stemming from feeling uneasy. And line six says, step back, stop pushing. Return is how we retrace our steps to start over. Because we have returned to ourselves, we can practice not embroiling or pushing our way out into the world. 
The way of Tao is about being, not striving. It is learning how to go with the flow by following. We become the guest, not the host. The introduction describes the mechanisms of change, flowing through the six empty places, rising and sinking without fixed law, firm and yielding, transform into each other. While people can get lost in the line interpretations, I feel it is more important to understand the lines as a means to an end. In other words, how two hexagrams are brought together so that we can understand the type of change or transformation at play. Over the centuries, many people have attempted to detect the algorithm behind the Yijing. But like nature, it can only be reduced to probabilities, not certainty. These open and closed lines were actually the inspiration behind the binary system used in technology today. Leibniz, its creator, was inspired by the Yijing and thought that all matter could be represented in binary sequencing of ones and zeros. By developing the Yijing, the Chinese achieved this vision. The Yijing portrays all aspects of life as variations of yin and yang coming together as Tao expresses itself in the world. By understanding the eight evolutionary forces of the Bagua, we can see how each captures nature's movement toward renewal. In Qian, or heaven, nature reveals its creative principle. This trigram has three yang lines and is often related to empowerment or initiation. As the seasons change, the sky opens like a drum and the trigram of thunder emerges. It is called shocking because it arouses change out of dormancy. In the trigram of fire, one yin line is surrounded by two yang lines. Like passion, there is a synergistic connection to whatever keeps a fire burning, and the trigram is called clinging. It captures a self-actualizing principle that connects all living things to instinct or sense of inner direction. Inspired by a sense of peacefulness reflected by the trigram of the joyous lake, satisfaction and dissatisfaction create ripples upon the surface of our lives. Satisfaction can quell the desire for endless change arising from being discontent, while dissatisfaction becomes the hunger pain that prods us towards necessary change. When we make the heart like a joyous lake, we can center ourselves in stillness. The trigram of the wind portrays the long-term and penetrating effects that cyclically transform the earth for rebirth. In yin and yang, high and low pressure systems are drawn together in a movement we call wind. The wind represents dedication and tenacity, where the smallest effort applied over time can carve mountains. When we close to the evolutionary forces of life, the trigram of the abysmal water rises to release us into the great river. Only by letting go can we open to the flow. Whether in our stories of floods, hurricanes, or a deluge, when we lose sight of the path, something may appear as danger when it's simply about life's drive towards renewal. The trigram of the mountain is stationary and represents the great power brought about by inner stillness. Through stillness, our inner world blossoms in fortitude and strength in a way that we cannot be thrown from our center. The mountain can represent the hardened perspective that can keep us a prisoner to the past or the heights that we can climb to to obtain enlightenment. During winter, yin reaches its apex as the earth is covered in snow. All signs of the creative recede below the earth at the onset of winter's incubation. But gestating in the womb of the yielding earth, the creative is reborn. Beneath the snow, the landscape of spring is just awaiting the thunder to awaken the sleeping seeds. As yin or the earth, this trigram is composed of only open lines. Both the Tao Te Ching and I Ching were used to advise rulers about events. Confucius was not a Taoist, but he still kept a copy with him throughout his life. The writings of Eckhart Tolle, Dr. Dwayne Dwyer, Alan Watts, and even Carl Jung all were inspired in some part by the I Ching. These principles are used in Tai Chi and martial arts as a way of teaching one how to build inner strength. Firm in our center, we can remain open and supple in a way that we cannot be thrown from balance. In my book, Nothing Bad Happens in Life, I draw on the more ancient ideas at the root of the Yijing and interpret the sequence of the 64 hexagrams as a pathway to power and wellness. My website, Café of Soul, 
offers the internet's most popular I Ching oracle. Inspired by nature and the original authors of the I Ching, it also includes Jungian ideas about the path to individuation. I also offer an I Ching app on iTunes that includes a diary. I've translated many ancient texts and feel that the I Ching is by far our most time-tested work of philosophy and self-help. Physicists are only today grasping the ideas that emerged from ancient China thousands of years ago. As an oracle, it offers guidance in a way that is quite profound and will surprise you with its accuracy. In the I Ching we are told, although you have no teacher, approach them like your parents. First take up the words, ponder their meaning, then the fixed rules will reveal themselves. Mm -hmm.